Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and I'm a gem cutter from Southern Australia and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. Today we have a very special episode of faceting gems from outer space. When we think of gemstones and how they are formed, we assume they all come from our planet we inhabit. That is not always the case as there are extraterrestrial gemstones. Let's look at those gems that originated from outer space. Anyway, I'm going back to Earth and I'll show you where some of these gemstones come from. Ok, let's have a look at some of the gems that can be found on Earth from outer space. Did you know that half a century ago, a huge meteorite was found in Argentina containing a great number of space peridot? Black diamonds are another extraterrestrial gem which has been confirmed by scientists to be formed by supernova exploding. Libyan Desert Glass, the theory of its origin was that a meteorite flash melted the surface of the Libyan Desert. Tektites are small glassy objects believed to have been formed as molten debris in meteorite impacts. Moldavite is another member of the tektite group, also formed from interplanetary collisions. So there we have it folks, the 5 main gems that come from outer space. So let's move on with faceting one of these space gems. In today's video I'll be featuring Moldavite. I think this is a gem that's been most requested by most people that I should facet. So for those people out there who've written in the comment section and you've asked me whether I could facet this gem, well this video is for you guys. I have to admit there is something alluring about a gem that's been formed by an impact collision from some object from outer space. I've been holding back from faceting Moldavite for some time now mainly because it's a silica based material, very similar to Helenite which has been formed within the ashes of Mount St Helens after it blew up and if you want to watch that video on me faceting Helenite you can just peruse through the videos I've made and you'll see me facet Helenite but when it comes to these obsidian based type of materials or silica based materials they are an absolute devil to polish so for those people who wish to facet Moldavite or wish to purchase Moldavite as a cut gem for jewellery, you need to be aware that there is a lot of fake Moldavite out there on the market, primarily made in China which is simply just glass. To tell if Moldavite is real, you will need to look at it under high magnification such as a jeweller's loop and it will show characteristic bubbles and also you will see a wavy flow texture of distinct wisps. Anyway, let's get on to the process of faceting this piece of Moldavite. So this is what we call the preform. Before we actually cut a gem we need to shape it and often with gem cutters we don't really know what the final outcome of the preform gem will be because there's lots of hurdles that you can come across within the gem. For example there could be inclusions. This gem has a lot of crevices in it and it also has a piece on the side which could literally shear off so that needs to be removed. So as you can see the basic preform is now complete 
and it's a rectangle shape and I still have these divots and little crevices left over from the preform so those will be removed during the gem cutting process but that will impact on the final weight and the size of the stone and that's one of the things about fasting it's a subtractive art form so from the time you start preforming till the time you finish the final polish you are always going to be losing some weight and some size to the gem so before I start let's have a look at the design and you can get hold of this design at facetingdiagrams.org and the name of the design is called Easy Tourmalin. Now I've never done this design before so hopefully it is easy because that's what I'm looking for. In recent months some of the designs I've been doing have been quite complex and not only that they have been quite time consuming. So the gem has been glued onto a brass dop stick and I allowed the glue to set overnight with both the gem and the dop stick sitting in a transfer block and I'll show you the transfer block later on for those people who've never seen what a transfer jig or transfer block looks like. To give you an idea of what I've just done, in the previous scenes I've set the protractor angle at 90 degrees and I'm basically just removing a bit more material to remove the divots and just once again shaping out the stone so I don't come across too many issues later on. So I'm ready to start fastening the first set of pavilion facets at 41.5 degrees and this will form a permanent center point. So the first four facets have been cut with a 240 grit disc and I have to admit it's cutting really fast so now I'll move on to a 600 grit disc and then I'll finish it off with a 3000 pre-polished disc. So here you can see what it looks like after I've used the 600 grit diamond topper lap and now you can see what it looks like with the 3000 grit diamond topper lap so it's a big difference. So coming up in the next scene, I've cut the next four facets, still using the 3000 grit diamond topper lap. So I'm ready to cut the rest of the pavilion facets and I've gone up to the 600 grit lap now because I have a little bit of material to grind through but I think this will go really quick. I had to look up the Mohs hardness of what Moldavite is and here it is here, it's 5.5 on the Mohs scale and that is very soft. Being such a soft material, it's almost inevitable that you will overcut on a facet by using too much pressure. That's one of the things about faceting, it doesn't matter how long you've been faceting for, we all overcut at some point in time. I have to admit when I overcut on a facet I find it quite annoying because I feel like I should be in control of things, particularly with pressure and usually overcuts come because you've overpressed too hard, too much pressure 
and when you overcut on a facet that means you get compromises by having to cheat and all sorts of things. So as you can see the gem is starting to take shape and I'll be pretty much using just a 3000 grit diamond topper lap to cut all the rest of the facets. So I've cut a few more facets on the pavilion and I've noticed there's a few meat points that just don't quite line up and we go back to what I mentioned earlier on about maybe too much pressure used on the first set of four facets and I've probably cut too deep on one side. So this leads to issues as you get closer to forming that center point. So that means I've got compromises which means I've got to cheat in some of these facets. Here you can see that I've cheated in a few of the facets so they line up a lot better but I will need to tweak them in a bit more with the polishing. So let's move on to polishing the facets. So now the fun begins because I've always had trouble polishing this type of material and hopefully it goes okay, you never know, but I'm using my tin lap and using a 50,000 grit diamond polish. So I'm pleased to say that so far with the facets I've polished on the Moldavite they have been ridiculously easy. Usually with these obsidian or silicate based type of gems I find them just a nightmare to polish but this is going pretty quick and almost too fast because I've noticed that I'm overcutting with the polish now so I've got to be really careful. In the following scenes you'll see that I've polished in sequence all the pavilion facets and I have to say that I'm really surprised how easy Moldavite is to polish. Well it's time to facet the crown now and as I mentioned earlier this is what the transfer block looks like or the transfer jig. The gem is mounted in the jig overnight and another dop stick is glued onto the gem and then detached by heat so I can facet the crown. In the following scenes you'll see how the crown has been faceted and in some ways it's very similar to faceting the pavilion. Of course there are different angles and you have to form a girdle outline and create a table but you use the same sequences of discs like you start off with a rough 600 and then you'll start the pre-polish. When you polish the facets you're still using the same tin lap and the 50,000 diamond polish. In this scene here I'm going to cut four tiny little facets manually without the motor running on the machine. I've marked the surface of the crown with a black highlighter pen and as you can see here the four tiny facets are now cut and all I'm doing is using a wet 3000 pre-polish lap and just swiping side to side on the surface to cut those facets.
Last but not least, we have all the scenes and the sequences of where the crown facets have been polished. And of course, I used a tin lap and 50,000 grit diamond polish to do this. So we're getting closer to the end of another one of my gem cutting videos and that means we're getting closer to the end of what we call the final reveal where I take the gem off the top stick, remove the glue and then place the gem on a rotator and you get to see what this gem looks like fully cut. In closing I would like to thank those people who requested that I make a video on how to cut Moldavite. Also I would like to thank all my regular subscribers and viewers for leaving all those comments. So until next time everybody, take care. Bye.